Welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. Intelligence and security officials in Nigeria are poring over a new video released by the two commanders of the Boko Haram insurgents group, threatened to launch fresh attacks in parts of the country with the federal capital territory a likely target. The two commanders were the ones released by the government in exchange for the 82 Chibok girls released last Saturday. The army has dismissed the video as propaganda and is calling on Nigerians to disregard the empty threats. They say the claims are boastful, spurious, out of tune with current realities, and aim at seeking relevance and attention. Director of Public Relations Brigadier General Sani Usman said the army would like to assure the public that the Nigerian army is totally committed to the federal government's determined efforts of rescuing all abducted persons and to peace in the country. He goes on to say, we will not relent our determined efforts of clearing the remnants of the Boko Haram terrorists as manifested through the ongoing clearance operations. Now, it's not the first time the Boko Haram has made such claims about attacks in parts of the country, and it's also not the first time the army has dismissed their claims. But they've always added that people need to be more vigilant and report to security agents when they see something suspicious. Terror groups or extremists or insurgent groups, whatever you prefer to call them, all believe in one similar ideology, to enforce an extremist perception of a certain religion on people with absolutely no reason to do so. Some countries, such as Pakistan, have been dealing with this on a regular basis. Fortunately, it has a government that is not giving up the fight. So, as extremist activists spring up in the most surprising places across the world, and even in the UK two months ago, a while back, we had a chat with the country's High Commissioner to Nigeria, retired Lieutenant General Aga Uma Farouk on the global fight against terror and Pakistan's relations with Nigeria. He spoke to my colleague, Gloria Umezuke. Mr. Uma Farouk, you're welcome to the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we've seen the impact of terrorism on uh, your Pakistan, actually, and uh, you continue to cope with this challenge. What is the one thing you want people to remember as they think of your country and the fight against terror? The effect of terrorism is exactly like living in the fire or living by the fire. So the terrorism affects the countries and the neighborhood much devastatingly as compared to what it affects the other regions or other nations. Pakistan, unfortunately, being part of that geological location where the terrorism has bred over the years. Uh, somehow, Pakistan remained relevant in the fight against terrorism. But you would agree that these fights are not time to time lasting, they, t they, they need a commitment and a resolve for a long time, for which we are grateful for the world for supporting Pakistan effort to fight back against the extremism and terrorism. So but, uh, the, the attack in West, uh, Westminster in the UK, uh, what sort of reaction did you, uh, did you get from people or how do you view the British government's response to that? I think uh, any terrorist act, irrespective of whether it's based on insanity or an extreme ideology has to be condemned because such attacks are against humanity. Uh, Lone Ranger's concept or a non-state actor becoming maverick in a civilized society itself is a, is, a, is a question that needs to be answered by the people of conscious. Such uh, insane attitudes or extreme ideologies can never be justified or supported or even argued about. Uh, there is a reason and there is a very firm requirement of coming together against not only those organizations who promote extremism and extreme ideology, but also those minds who live in a co comparatively comfortable cultures and educated societies who have absorbed them, given them opportunities, given them a better life, but they still choose a path of irrationality. So I think again, once again, it's crying, crying again that we need to be together to fight irrespective of it's coming from a lone ranger or it's coming from an organization who's rogue or who's looking forward to push through the extreme ideology. You know, perhaps that's something uh, countries like Nigeria can learn about these sort of attacks and how to better respond. You know, is, is that something you, you want to uh, give an advice or, or some strategy that Nigeria could use in this uh, time where we try to deal with Boko Haram? A Nigerian experience with extremism is now almost spanning 25 years. And I think by and large, Nigeria as a society and Nigerian armed forces, including police, has been able to grapple with it. Yes, there were some low and high points, 
there were some some uh, probably failures and successes too but by and large the nigerian armed forces the police and law enforcement agencies have learned very well in my analysis looking at the uh, spectrum of conflict around the world the boko haram factor is not as complex as al qaeda jaish or uh, uh, isis is however since they are pursuing a similar ideology so any linkage would be much more serious challenge so the nigeria as a society and as a nation needs to make sure that the linkages between uh, boko haram and any other foreign sponsor or foreign fundings or financial linkages to with isis or any other base which promotes ideologies of of violence must not take place having contained uh, boko haram uh, to the domestic scene thereafter the a composite strategy or policy is required while the military has to do the hard hard power that's the only resolve that the people from hardline understand but at the same time the strategy is based on social ideological economic financial education livelihood are also very important because you would agree that when people are not fed when they don't have hope when they don't get uh, a decent living and they can can be one of the breeding ground of irrational behaviors do you sense such commitment you know coming on strong from the government i think so when i i, I heard the first speech by mr buhari the president on the inauguration day we very outlined three priorities and number one was security followed by agriculture and education i think that's made lot of lot of sense and over the last now 18 months or plus he has shown resolve the government has displayed a commitment Uh, even uh, issue of uh, chibo girls also has been probably handled much better as compared to two years before so while one may not be satisfied with the kind of progress one is expecting i think the direction is right